you always have to look at what it is that requires your home to function better, what it is that requires you as an individual, but always choose something or do something that you love to do. Don't just keep putting it into other people, whether it's your children, whether it's your spouse. Learn how to make yourself happy and fulfilled, and then you can contribute to someone else and help them be fulfilled and be happy. Hey, I'm Brooke Jean, therapist, recovering perfectionist, and struggling working mom on a mission to normalize normal. If you're an overwhelmed, high achieving, and secretly anxious mama, struggling to balance it all and on the brink of burnout, you are in the right place. Here is where we talk about hard things like balancing work and family life, mental health, and how to navigate life-altering transitions. Nothing is too taboo here. In my conversations, I'll teach you how to let go of who you think you're supposed to be in order to create the life you've always wanted. Get ready to embrace your messy, shed the shoulds, and find freedom through a life unperfected. This is the Unperfected Pod. Hey there, Mama. I am so excited for you to hear the juicy conversation that I had with Miss Sandra King today. She is an entrepreneur who connected to her purpose later in life and launched a health and wellness business that is just absolutely thriving in Memphis, Tennessee. In this conversation, we cover everything from how she connected to her purpose through some of the most painful moments in her life. How it's never too late to chase your dreams. I mean, she did it when she was 45 years old and she has four children she had already raised. How being a mother set her up for success that she has in her business now. She makes smoothies and we talked about functional nutrition and how those of us who are really struggling with energy and brain fog and anxiety. Hello, that's all of us, right? She shared her favorite smoothie recipe that's going to help us with that energy piece right now. And we also talked about what is the biggest thing that she had to unlearn in order to become the version of herself that she is today and to have the success that she has today, which was mm, newsflash all about addressing fear. So you are not going to want to miss this conversation. There are a ton of takeaways for those of you that are thinking about entrepreneurship, and I cannot wait to hear what you guys think. Let's go. My friends, I am so excited for today's episode because we get to chat with a mother, an entrepreneur, a business owner, an author, and a woman who I just believe is really modeling for other women and mothers what it looks like to chase your dreams, find your passion, connect to your purpose, maybe even a little later into your motherhood journey. So I want to introduce you guys to Miss Sandra King. Sandra, thank you so much for being with me today. Hello, Brooke. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Yes. Okay. I'm going to just go ahead and kick off with your formal bio so everybody knows who we're working with here and knows a little bit about you and then we'll jump right into the questions. So friends, like I said, this is Sandra King. She is an entrepreneur, businesswoman, and a best-selling author. She describes herself as an entrepreneur by profession, inspirational writer by passion, and an author by purpose. She's also a nutrition enthusiast and the proud owner of K&B Smooth Nutrition. K&B Smooth Nutrition creates organic, nutrient-packed superfood smoothies that energize the body for optimal function and taste good. We know we need that. k and offers online purchase with delivery options and has several grab-and-go locations within the city. Locations include Cycle Bar, Mind, Body, House Yoga Studio, Core Collective Broad, Brown Skin Yoga, and Rumble Boxing. Sandra's passion for health inspired a career towards helping others take control of their well-being for longevity and increased quality of life. Sandra has also been featured on Action News 5, Bluff City Life, Memphis Health and Fitness Magazine, The Scout Guide Memphis, Memphis Voyager Magazine, The Bartlett Express Newspaper, and The Kim Jacobs Show for her achievements within the health and wellness community. So she is doing the damn thing. Okay, Sandra, so... (laughs) <laughs> she's my daughter heard you in the background she's like <laughs> she's doing the damn thing okay so let's yeah. just start with your story okay because mm-hmm. i think as working moms we just want to hear from other working moms so let's start yeah. with a little bit about who you are 
and how you got into the health and wellness space. Okay. Well, I'm Sandra King and I am an author, as you mentioned, and I'm also a nutrition enthusiast, I would say. Um, I always loved nutrition. I was brought up under parents who were gardeners. So I kind of got that um, look at wellness life first hands on with them because I knew the importance of just having homegrown fruits and vegetables and what how it impacted your body. And I've always loved to write. So I started years ago blogging, actually, because I thought that was a good way for me to write. But it was also a good way for me to share my love of nutrition So that's kind of how it started. So I would blog pretty much every day. I would show recipes of smoothies. I would do things from wellness tips, from like vitamins. It would be food that I may have cooked. So I did that for like probably roughly 10 years just doing it because that's just what I like to do. So I started getting like a lot of traffic and people noticing and they started saying like, hey, you may need to just look into making this, you know, official And I still, I really didn't want to do that because I just love doing it. I just like the writing aspect of it because I could kind of just kind of maneuver just what I want to do. I can kind of share a little bit of everything. And of course, I kind of put it to a a side at the time because I was working corporately and I had a really high demanding job. It took a lot of my time, my energy, physically, mentally. I had a daughter at the time. She was a senior in high school. So it was just like I was always just my mind, I just wasn't there to just give my complete time to just writing all the time. But I will always carve out time to write. And I would even bring smoothies to work sometimes. And I would just do it in between meetings in between, you know, my lunch break sometime I would just because that was kind of like a therapeutic thing for me. But in the middle of that, I worked there for like 11 years corporately. What was your corporate job? I was working for Memphis Shelby County Schools. So I was in procurement. I started there and then I was in asset management. So there um, we used to go out to different schools. We were kind of in control of the assets throughout the whole district. So it was a kind of like a not a sit down job. You were just moving around just all the time because you just had to be in so many places. And then you kind of had to focus on. I work closely with finance, so it's kind of like it really needs your attention number-wise because I work with a lot of numbers. So by the time I would get home, I would be so exhausted. And like I said, sometimes my daughter would ask me a question and I would just be like, can you just wait maybe an hour to just give my mind time to just kind of recuperate from all the just not the noise at work? Yes. But I did that for like 11 years and, but I love working there because I get a chance to, I feel like everything I learned there kind of equipped me for what I do now. Yes. And I still have relationships with a lot of people there. But once we lost our jobs, when COVID hit, that was kind of a time for me to refocus. And what I mean by refocus, that was the first time in my life I didn't know what really what my plan B was. Because I was so used to being strategic, kind of organized, saying, you know, I just kind of had things planned out. My everyday kind of looked the same. So when I got in the space of, okay, I'm here. I don't have a job to go to right now. (laughs) So what is it? So I remember asking myself, what is it that you want to do, Mm. Sandra? Like, what is it that you want to do? Not what anyone else wants you to do. Just something that really just makes you happy and fulfills you and that you know that you are contributing to this world. Mm. And it came back to writing. I knew that was what I was supposed to be doing. And at the time, I wrote a couple books. I was in this anthology, which got me a lot of recognition. I published two solo books after that. But I still wanted to do that nutrition with the smoothie thing. Mm -hmm. And it kind of came back to, I started experiencing my own health journeys. I had migraines really badly, acid reflux, high blood pressure. My I had hypertension to the point that they were all one. My physician was basically wanting to put me on medication. And I just really didn't want to get put on medication, basically. I asked him, I said, well, is there something I can do? And he was like, well, yeah, but with your hypertension escalating the way it is and your, your migraines are just getting more severe, 
you would really need to get put on medicine. So I, I tried it for maybe like a week and I didn't like how it made me feel because it, it felt as if my heart was just racing really fast. Like one helped kind of treat my migraines, the other would kind of help my hypertension. So it was kind of like it was doing like this counter effect on me where I was just, I felt like I was just lethargic all the time, like I was out of it. And then my, it was like my heart was just racing. So I told him it so happened we end up having a fast at church. So we did the seven day thing where we eliminated sweets, meats, bread. That sounds challenging. I'm just going to say yeah. sweets, meat, and bread. Those are basically my three core food groups. Yeah. So I decided to do that. So we did that. And like I said, my energy level wasn't at the time. It was just not good because it was like my body was still on that working the hours that I worked yes. so many years, yes. it was just like I almost couldn't come down off of it. Well, yeah. And all that adrenaline is still in your body mm-hmm. from that intense job. Yeah. People yeah. People don't understand when they finally leave that intense job or that traumatic relationship, environment, whatever, it takes a while. It does. To shed that corporate skin, to regulate your nervous mm-hmm. system, to get back to homeostasis. It's not an overnight thing. Like it's I remember not. It's not. it took me like three years after leaving my corporate career to not wow. have anxiety when I went into other target stores that didn't look perfect or hearing yeah. the walkie talkie. I still felt like it was my fucking call to make. <laughs> so I, it takes a while, right? Okay. It does. Take us through your journey of how yeah. did you finally regulate? Yeah, so after I did the fast, I noticed I started feeling different. Okay. In a good way. My energy, I had more energy, but I didn't feel like it was uncontrollable. I just kind of felt like, hmm, my body never really felt this way. I feel feel kind of good. I noticed I didn't have any migraines, any headaches. I didn't feel um, all that anxiety and my digestion issue I didn't have any problems with it. So it was almost like miraculous. After just the seven day fast. After the seven days. Wow. And I remember telling my sister and I said, I feel really different. And I said, but I think I may want to just go maybe another week just to test the theory to make sure this is just not me (laughs) mentally thinking this is happening and nothing is happening. Right. So she was like, okay, we'll do it. Well, I'm I'm still going to, at this point, she was like, I, I need to go get some meat, some protein, because <laughs> you can do what you want to do, but I need something. And I remember I just decided to go vegetarian. And I did that for a total of six months. It's just like I went full in. Wow. And I had I didn't experience not one issue of brain fog. I didn't have anxiety. I didn't have headaches. I didn't have, my blood pressure was normal. And I remember I went back to my physician and he looked at me and he said, what happened? What did you do? And I said, I just basically changed my diet around. And I started drinking smoothies like every single day. I made sure I had smoothies every day. I drank like maybe two smoothies a day. And I love green smoothies. And I started making green smoothies And that's when I kind of learned how to manipulate smoothies, put things in it that I like, that I know my body needed, because it kind of made it functional for me. I didn't feel overwhelmed by thinking, okay, you need this amount of protein, you need this many grams, you need this many grams of carbs, you need to make sure you're getting your fiber in, you need to make sure you're getting your iron in. So when I started thinking that way, that's when I felt myself going back into that anxiety level, like feeling overwhelmed, like saying, I this is too much for me. Like there's no way I can eat every day and just proportion and just think consciously, okay, you need to take a little bit of this off, take a little bit of that off, but make sure you're getting this, make sure you're getting that. So I just figured a way to kind of combine the things that I know I needed. I started doing research on food. It was like, I just became obsessed with YouTubing and researching foods, what made you feel better, what made you feel worse, things that your body required and needed how it impacted your body. I searched on what people should do, what they should not do, if they had health issues. So it was like I did that for years because I was so intrigued at that point just what food could do because it was just like miraculous for me. Mm -hmm. So once I 
figured that out, it was just like a no brainer for me. So I just started, that's how I started with the smoothie thing. Just started just drinking smoothies. And that went on for a while. And just fast forward a few years, that's when my father took ill and he passed suddenly. So, and I remember he told me one day, he said, um, K, well, he called me K by my middle name. If I had known that drinking smoothies and just basically eating better, having a healthier lifestyle would impact you so much, I would have done it much differently. Mm. And when he said that, um, I still didn't think he was going to pass, you know, because he just wasn't, we weren't expected it. We just knew it was kind of like a change from what we were used to, but that just didn't cross our minds. Mm. So um, he was like, you have something special here. And I was like, oh, you know, just like a normal father-daughter conversation. I was like, well, yeah, you know, thank you, Dad, for saying that. That means a lot. And he was like, yeah, just keep it up. And after he passed, maybe a couple weeks after that, it was just like all that just mentally in my head. I just didn't get it out in my head, you know. So at that point, that's when I decided, okay, Sandra, you said you were going to write. You did that. You took that first step. So now what are you going to do with the nutrition thing? So that's when I decided to launch um, K and B's. I just did it really on a whim and did it out of, I would say, the worst time of my life. I did it literally in the moment of grief and sorrow because that was like the worst time of my life. But yet it felt like the best time of my life. But I just didn't have him here physically to share it with him. So I feel like this is my way of giving myself back, getting myself back and keeping his legacy as well. So once I did that, I just basically just started doing smoothies. I went to one place to do a pop-up event at Cycle Bar. They just opened their door for me and it was like a ripple effect. And from that point, it was just like, it just grew and grew and grew. And I just feel so thankful because now I get the opportunity to share with people like you, you know, and it was like a day last week. I was like, man, I kind of wish I miss writing physically with paper and pencil. And I remember I just heard that still small voice of God saying, well, you're not writing physically, but you're still sharing your story because people are still listening to your story. You're getting a chance to tell people your story, but other people are speaking for you when you do it on this platform, whether it's in a magazine, whether it's on a podcast. So that made me feel good because just to share the impact of a healthy life, being a mother, having a corporate job, leaving a corporate job. And that's a lot just on a person in general, just to, um, and then it takes a toll on your body physically Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because it's just so much going on. And, but I realized that made it functional for me just incorporating smoothies, no matter where I go, I can have a busy day, I can take one to go, or I can pre-make it and take it with me. So that's kind of how I started on the health journey. And I just kept it up. And I said, wow, I just want to share this with people so they can know because some people just don't know. And some people are looking for an alternative and people are just looking for hope, you know, and looking for something outside of medication or looking to hear from someone that just stepping out on faith and getting out of your mode of being comfortable. Sometimes you have to be uncomfortable. I've learned to be comfortable and um, all advice is good advice. And sometimes you have to unlearn the things that you've learned. And I've learned that it's okay to apply certain things to certain seasons of your life, but some things are not applicable now as they were then. And it's okay to have an open mind to change. So that's what I learned as a mother, even like with my children, I've learned that some things that I taught some of my older children or things that I use with them, with tools, resource, even with discipline, it didn't pertain to my last daughter because she was younger. There was such a huge age gap. Times had changed. Technology changed. Everything had changed. And she was like, well, mom, you just don't, Things have changed. You know, you have to be a little more open minded. Let me go here or let me do this. And I was like, no, 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 because I was taught you can't, you know. And then one day I kind of caught myself and I was like, okay, let's try something different. Let me see if I can trust you to do this with this, you know, with this daughter. And it worked. And 
it made me feel good because I, that was something that I wouldn't have done with my other children. So I learned that it's always good to have that open mind of communication as well. Be open for change and change is always not comfortable and it can be really scary too, you know, just to get used to the way of living every day and things that you were taught and things that you had to learn. So it's kind of like you're starting over teaching yourself new things as well. So, yeah. I think that's such a key to success is being open to change and open to growth and open to the evolution of yourself, your family, your system, basically. But Mm -hmm. before we get further in, how many kids do you have and how old are they now? I have four. My oldest is 30. My next to the oldest is 27. Mm -hmm. I have a 25-year-old and a 20-year-old. Okay. And I also have three grandchildren. 20 to 30 is the span. Mm -hmm. And you are a different mother for that 30-year-old than you were for that 20-year-old. Yes. Yes. Definitely. Right? Because we grow, we evolve. So it's okay to be a work in progress. But you said so many beautiful things that I want to dig into, but one that really stuck out that I want to unpack a little bit more with you is that in order mm-hmm. to arrive at this next stage in your career and your development in your spirituality mm-hmm. in your whatever yeah. you have to unlearn some shit what is one yes. of the biggest and most painful things that you had to unlearn to step into this kind of mompreneur that you are now oh gosh i, I would say the biggest thing i had to learn was fear Oof. And I mean, oof. Fear. Yeah. That was the biggest thing for me. Fear of the unknown. And how would that show up for you? The fear of the unknown. How would that manifest and show up for you? And how did you work through it? Wow. That would, I would say mentally, because I've always been an overthinker. Mm -hmm. And an overthinker or an open overthinker? Overthinker. Yeah. Yeah. I would think, I'm the type of person who I would think one, two, three years ahead. Yeah. And, and all, the, um, all the things that could go wrong at the one, yes. two, three years ahead. And then what that could do to that. It's like mm-hmm. you're constantly, tra- your fear, or like your fear creates thoughts of what could go wrong. And the yes, what could go wrong. The yeah. possibilities. And I guess I would say preparation as well, because you want to be prepared for things. Mm-hmm. But when you're in a position that all of those things are taken away from you mm-hmm. and you just find yourself alone with yourself. And at this point, you know that you have the tools to be successful, but you're so afraid that you can't just get out there and do it because of what people may say. People may think you're unqualified. People may think just because you're a woman, you may can't do certain things So that was the biggest thing for me is having fear and fear of being unaccepted. Mm -hmm. And so at that point, I just had to realize, okay, you didn't get this far for nothing. You didn't learn all of this that you've learned just to just sit here. And I've always been a fighter, like a go-getter. My father, I remember he always told me, he would tell people, my baby daughter, if you close a door to her, she's going to find a way into the back door. If you close the front door, she's going to find her way in. And I've never liked telling people telling me no or I can't do something. I've always been that girl. Yeah. You're not going to tell me what I can't do. I'll show you. I'm going to show, show you. you how yeah. I and, can. Yes. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And my mother used to always say, I can show you better than I can tell you. <laughs> so... I was that type of girl that, you know, I could research something and then I would just say, just give me a moment and I can prove it to you. But I've had to learn that I don't always have to prove things to other people. If I know I'm qualified to do something, if I know this is what I'm supposed to do, then I'm going to do it. So I kind of had that mindset. Once that happened, I've learned to just take that leap of faith and put on what I would say brakes, gas and no brakes. And it was just like I had that come to Jesus moment. And I was like, okay, you can either go gas and no brakes or stay on your brakes, stay in neutral and try to figure out what it is you want to do. Or you can just go out there and make it happen. And I've learned that 
you can have the life that you want. It's not going to be easy. You know, anything you want in life, it's going to be hard. It's going to take hard work. But if it's something that you really want, that you're passionate about, that you love, then I would say just go for it. And sometimes you may not know where it's going to take you. You may not know if it's going to succeed, but you will never know if you don't try. So I had to kind of ask myself and tell myself, rather, you're going to do this. You're going to try. If it fails, it's okay, because at least you can say you try. And I refuse to leave this world and not pursue things that fulfill me, make me happy, that I know that's my purpose to do, that I know it's going to help other people, other women, um, people that are experiencing health issues. It's, I feel like it's my job to tell people, share my story, because it's just like you having something good in life and or with a child and you're, oh, this has happened for you. This is amazing. You've had a baby or you've had something really good to eat and you never tell anyone about it. Or you never show how you got there or how it tasted or and you just sit there and say, well, it was really good. And I'm just going to sit here and just continue to eat it. But if no one ever knows how it tastes or where you went, then it's just going to sit there. So I kind of look at that in business sense as well. If you never take the chance, if you never get out there, if you never show anyone then people will never know. They will never know you. They will never know your product. They will never know the story. And that's why I love being around other women. I love being around other entrepreneurs because I guess, I don't know if it's just the author in me. I love hearing people's stories. Me too. That just fulfills me so much. It's because you, you look at people, you look at their successes, but you never know how they got there. You never know how it started for them. You never know what it took for them to get there. And I've learned not to judge people because you never know what their story is, where they came from, and how hard they had to fight to get there. That's right. So I would say, yeah. That's beautiful. Okay, yeah. so the biggest thing that you had to unlearn was fear. And it sounds like tapping into faith, believing mm -hmm. in yourself, that mm -hmm. kind of tenaciousness you have deep down inside to you know, A, prove people wrong, but share the message. But I think the other key point there was I connected with my purpose, which was this message around health and wellness and how to leverage smoothies to optimize mm -hmm. health and wellness. And what I love so much about your story is, first of all, it didn't follow this like trajectory that I think most people think goes to success, right? You found mm -hmm. your success in the corporate world early on and then in entrepreneurship later on. But you mm -hmm. connected to your purpose through mm -hmm. your pain. Yeah. And this is so beautiful to me because as human beings, we are pain resistant, right? We yeah. feel the fear and we run the other way. Yeah. We want to protect we ourselves. We don't want to be judged or not fit in mm -hmm. or whatever. But what I want people to hear is listen to me, there is so much purpose and power in our pain. It is. None of us are getting out of here unscathed, okay? There is mm -hmm. human suffering is going to happen. And you said something really beautiful earlier, which was like, when I lost my dad, that grief was fucking unbearable. And mm -hmm. yet it was the most beautiful and transformative time in my life. And so yes. a lot of times yeah. people are like searching outside of themselves for their purpose and their passion and what that next big idea is. And it's almost like y'all yeah. just sit and live life and be open to it because the pain going to find you. Yeah, it will. And if you're brave <laughs> enough to face it and sit with it. There's mm -hmm. something in it for you that's bigger than the pain yeah. itself. So can you say mm -hmm. a little bit more about how you turn that pain into purpose and power and passion and or how you think it informed you as a yeah. businesswoman or as a human being, mm -hmm. how it transformed you, just anything that you want to say on that, because that's a part of your story that I think resonates with a lot of people. Yeah, definitely. When I say I started my business literally in a time of pain, I remember I was in the middle of a, first of all, we were in the middle of a ice storm here. It was really cold. And I remember 
at that time, my father had gotten sick, but like I said, we didn't know the magnitude that the stages that it was in. And I was in the middle of an anthology. So it was this book I was involved in called The Breaking Point with um, Dr. Paulette Harper. She's a well-renowned, um, multiple, multiple best-selling author. She put out this, I would say, request that she wanted 20 authors to contribute to this book. And I immediately felt like I didn't, I couldn't contribute to it because I felt like I didn't have enough experience as a writer, but I was persuaded to join in on it by some family members. And it was like, you need to do this. So I decided to take her up on it. And the book was, thankfully, it was a, a best-selling book. It was endorsed by Les Brown. So we had a lot of um, recognition for the book. And I remember we had some deadlines to meet. And I, were, I was in that phase where we had maybe like a week to get the things they were asking for. So in the middle of that, my father, he had passed. So I was in one city. My mom and I, well, my parents stay in a different part of the town. So I'm kind of like further out. And I remember I had to pack up and really move in unexpectedly with them for like, with my mother and my sister for like three months. So it was kind of like I was just back and forth for three months. And I was the one that was kind of in charge of the obituary, you know, trying to help my mom keep it together because they were married like 50 years. And um, my sister, she just said she just really couldn't handle just the pressure of dealing with a bitch, you know, just dealing with the big things. Mm -hmm. So I took on that project and I remember I had my iPad one night, I would be up to like 12 or one o'clock in the morning and my mom would be like, you need to get sleep. And, you know, and I always tell her, this may sound crazy, but I'm so used to working in, in this function. I've, you know, just mentally, you're, when you're in a corporate world mindset, I said, I really work good under pressure. I know, I, said, I know that doesn't make sense to you, but I'm so used to having multiple tasks to tackle. You know, as a woman, I think that's something that we are just born with as a woman. We can handle so many things at one time. And I told her I was good. And I said, I'm just going to finish this up so everything can get resolved. And I said, I have to send this over to the book and get this all typed up for the obituary. I had to get statements from my children to include in the obituary. So, and I remember I had my iPad and I had my laptop. And I had my iPad typing up my father's obituary and on my laptop typing up the rest of my book. <laughs> And I remember I would be crying, typing, wiping tears, mm. crying, typing, wiping tears, wow. crying, mm. typing. And I was just saying in my mind, I can't believe I'm typing this about my father in past tense, you know, Ooh. because at that time he passed. Yeah. But I remember the words that he always spoke to me and he would say, Sandra, you were the strong one. So it was almost like as if I knew he knew because he was telling me too many things, you know, once I sat down and thought about it, that he was trying to tell me at the time. And so I kind of just, that almost just fueled me. And I did that and I said, you got to get this done. You're not a quitter. You're a fighter. You always have been. So I know you're going to get through this. And that's what I told myself every day. So once I completed that task, I said, now it's time for you to do what you want to do and give back in the way that you want to give back and whatever that looks like, you know, what makes you happy, not what no one else's opinion of, you know, saying, well, you never ran a business before, or you never, you know, how are you going to do this? How are you going to do that? That was one time in my life. I just simply didn't care. And I said, you put it right. There's no brain do it. space to care about yeah. when you're grieving. Yeah performing, producing, yeah, writing. Yeah. When you're doing all mm -hmm. that, 14 full-time psychological jobs, mm -hmm. it's almost yeah. like the pain became a defense to other people's opinions. A yeah. defense to those outside noises. There was no space for mm -hmm. that. When you're literally no taking it day by day, hour by hour, minute by minute on deadline. Yeah. And grief, that's what this is. 
Yeah. And I said, this is one time that I'm taking control of my life. Yes. I'm not reporting to someone else. I'm not leaving when someone else wants me to leave. I'm not taking vacation when someone approves it. I'm not taking sick time because, you know, this was one yes. time I felt like this is your opportunity to do what you want to do. Mm-hmm. No bars. Mm. Just go in and do it. And that's kind of the mindset I had. I, I said, I'm going to do it. And I was, I refused because I did this much later in life. I said, my children are adults now. Now I can focus on completely focus on myself. I don't have to worry about picking someone up from school. I don't have to worry about dropping someone off. I don't have to worry about dropping their friends off. I don't have to worry about packing anything for lunch. I don't have to worry about doing paying tuition. I don't have to be. So it was just kind of like I had gotten to that point and I said, you're at this age. What are you going to do about it? Mm. This is your time to do how old are you at this point? You're telling me. I'm 48 me. now. So I would say I was about 45. Okay. 45. Yeah. So 45. At 45. We are finally 45. giving ourselves permission. Permission. To dream, to, to go for our purpose and yeah. passion, to clear out the noise, to not live on mm-hmm. someone else's timeline. Yeah. That's a huge part of your unlearning. Yeah. Because as women, we are conditioned to do things a certain way and to put ourselves mm-hmm. last. And here you are at 45 going, now is my time. Yeah. And I say, you were existing all of these years. Mm. That's what I told myself. You've been existing all of these years, but now it's time for you to live. Ooh. Yeah. That is going to hit so many mamas because so many of us hit that midlife point what I you think call it's the midlife awakening versus the midlife crisis, because you hit a point where you realize that you have just been surviving and following all the rules, but you're not happy. Mm-hmm. You feel empty. You, you don't understand mm-hmm. why you're not thriving, why you're not happy. And it's because you've lived in accordance with everyone yeah. else's expectations. And so that moment where we get to either pivot and start living mm-hmm. for who we are and what we want and how we want to feel is a midlife awakening or we stay on the hamster wheel and we end mm-hmm. up getting sick. I believe as women, we, we end up getting sick with things like mental health issues, autoimmune issues, because we are stuffing ourselves into these small little packages and showing mm-hmm. up day after day for all of our roles and responsibilities and ignoring the call. For something mm-hmm. bigger and brighter for ourselves, yeah. ignoring the call to take better care of ourselves, ignoring mm-hmm. the permission to, to dream. And we get sick when we stay on that path. Yeah, you but do. Sometimes you get the universe sick. just kicks you in the ass hard enough that you wake up mm-hmm. like your grief you did, the loss of your father mm-hmm. or yeah. whatever it is. Right. For me, it was a community trauma that buckled me. But it, mm-hmm. the universe will sometimes kick you in the ass where it's like, this isn't the path, honey. Go ahead and yeah, step not forward the, mm-hmm. the light. And you did. But it takes a lot of courage it to break free of the conditioning, to unlearn the things, to believe in yourself, mm-hmm. to clear out the noise. It takes courage. It's not easy. We're not minimizing it. Yeah. But it's a path that's worth it because now you're living in alignment with what your soul was meant to do with mm-hmm. what you want to be doing. That's why it's yeah. successful, by the way. Yeah. Thank you. And it's needed. It's needed. It is. And so it I is. want people to hear these messages from your story. It's never too late. If never. you're in a midlife awakening, listen to Sandra's words and how she navigated the uncertainty of that. Mm-hmm. Pursue your passion. Like the things that matter to you that you're curious about, Sandra, you were saying, like I spent years researching ingredients because I became obsessed in passion guys if you're obsessed about something that's an indicator yeah you might that might be there's it may be what you need to be purpose. doing yeah right it really like, is and that's obsessed about human behavior and development and psychology and mental health and mom's mental health well because mm-hmm. there's reason for that you're being called to that but you have to give yeah. yourself permission to say yes and yes and then no to the things that are no longer yeah. in alignment but it's yeah. never too late to make that pivot 
and it's worth it. And a lot of times, a lot of the information you need resides in your pain. Mm hmm. Yeah, it really does. It really does. And, and it's not a business idea that you can formulate. There are layers of your lived experience is. that led you up mm -hmm. to the creation of K&Bs. This wasn't yeah. just like you were 28 and you were like, how can I think harder yeah. what my business model is going to be? Like, y'all, that shit <laughs> yeah. is outdated. It's not cognitive. Mm -hmm. It's bigger than that. It is spiritual. Yeah, it is it developmental. Is. It is systemic. It is purpose-driven. It is soul-led. Like, And so don't rush it either. Yeah, it will come time is everything. If you're awake and paying attention and willing to be brave enough to say yes mm -hmm. to the call, but it will come. It will. I'm telling you, it definitely will. That's Just so Just listen to yourself. Let me ask you this, because I've been really intrigued and like curious about this lately, which is this concept okay. that like being a mother and mothers in general make the best leaders. Mm -hmm. because yeah. innately we've gone through hell and back with our children. Mm -hmm. We have tapped into sources of strength. We never knew we had by having the children. We yeah. constantly are forced to grow and evolve because of our children. We mm -hmm. get kind of broken down to the bare bones, like becoming a mother exposes all of your triggers, okay. your traumas, your insecurities, and we're forced to okay. heal them and grow. But what do you have to say about how motherhood positioned you for the success that you found? And also, I think being in corporate world, like you and I both have a corporate background, and that mm -hmm. was really hard, but I know it definitely molded the business owner and the leader that I am today. But let's just mm -hmm. keep it with motherhood. How has becoming a mom prepared you or helped you with the success in the business that you have today? I believe it... My children, they inspire you. Mm. So as adults or mothers, we teach our children. But it comes a time sometimes when your children actually can teach you. Absolutely. So I've learned that just they inspire me as far as now they're adults. So it's like now I've given myself permission to do the things that I love, run my business, but it's always good to know that they're still watching you. Mm -hmm. So now I have the opportunity to allow them to see me in the best form of my life, the best form of myself, a healthy version of myself. And that makes me happy because they can see, okay, my mom has, she waited to this time in her life. It's not too late. She achieved the dream that she wanted to achieve. She's been, and not trying to, toot my own horn or pet my own self on the back, but she's been on television. You know, she's been on TV. She's yeah. been in magazines. Yeah. And I honestly said that would have never happened if I didn't overcome my fear of failure and just fear in general. And sometimes I ask myself, what would have happened if I had, had not I have done that? Yeah. No one would know who I am. No one would know what I had to offer. But it's good to know that your children are watching. So I guess that inspiration mm -hmm. motivates me more as a businesswoman because I can say now that they have children, some of them have children, they can say, my mother did this or my grandmother did this. Yes. She launched her own business and I can, sometimes they help me in my business. So it's kind of teaching them as well to wake up the entrepreneurial person in them mm -hmm. to know that, hey, you can go to school, you can go to college, you can get your degrees. But I always tell them, but do something that you love to do. Get your career that you know you're going to want to do, that you're going to be happy to wake up to do it. You're just not here contributing to someone else. You want to be able to put back in yourself and feel fulfilled at the end of the day and know that you're giving your best self, you're helping others but it's not something that someone else is telling you to do. I said, because you can work a job for 20 years and be the most unhappy person and you leave just empty every day. So, and I tell them, make sure, choose something that it is that you want to do that makes you happy, you know, but still use wisdom. 
but also no one can tell you what that thing is, but you, mm. you know, when you figure that thing is, whatever that is, like you were going back to saying when I was researching food and one day I was sitting down, I said, well, what is it? You like to do this. You like to do this, Sandra. What is it? So once I kind of quiet, got myself in a quiet position, I just started looking at all the things that I shared. Most of the content was smoothies. So that's when I said, okay, this is what you need to stay true to. You know, you can do a lot of things. People do a lot of things, I would say, but stick to what speaks to you, what you know you're supposed to do. Because it's easy to get off on someone else's path or listen to one, someone say, well, hey, well, you know, you should be doing this or maybe you can do this. No, no. And I've learned to say no. Mm-hmm. And some things are just not in alignment of what you're wanting to do. And some things are, it's just not the way you want to go. So I've always learned to just stay true to what it is I know I'm supposed to do and things that no longer serve me. I've reached a stage in my life that I'm not going to do it. If it doesn't serve me, whether it's a person, whether it's a thing, I want to have peace about it. And I want to have a clean conscience when I go to sleep at night. And if I feel like you're interrupting my peace or if something is trying to interrupt my peace, my happiness and my fulfillment, you have to leave. You just can't be around me. And that's basically it. Because people can easily and things drain you from your your energy, Mm -hmm. you know, just take from you that you don't have anything to give back. You know, so I've learned not to let people just pull on me so much that I forget what it is I'm supposed to do. That I'm focused on their problems, their issues, because you can try to help people all day long. But until they realize they need the help. Mm -hmm then it's just like you're just speaking to a wall. Mm -hmm. But when you realize, okay, I need help. This is what I need to do. This is what are you going to do to make it happen? Because I can tell you all day long what you need to do. But until you realize, okay, I'm going to accept this. I have a problem with this or I need to do this. Then you can move further. So I've learned basically that uh, just being an inspiration to people, my children, that's what motivates me even as a business owner. Because I can continue in my business But I have them watching and that's like an inspiration to me as well, because that makes me want to go even harder. That makes me want to keep doing the things that I'm doing and also leave a legacy, you know, Mm -hmm. that they can keep with them those things that they can, those tangible things and things that are good mental thoughts that they can have to say, okay, it wasn't too late. Mm -hmm. She did it. And I tell them, you don't always have to and you don't have to wait. This happened for me in this stage of my life. And I'm glad it did because I feel like I have matured enough. But some people may encounter it earlier on. But you have to do as a mother what fits best for you, what works best for you, your family. You know, you may not have four children. You may have one child. So you always have to look at what it is that requires your home to function better, what it is that requires you as an individual But always choose something or do something that you love to do. Don't just keep putting into other people, whether it's your children, whether it's your spouse. Learn how to make yourself happy and fulfilled. And then you can contribute to someone else and help them be fulfilled and be happy. Because you can't pour into an empty tank and just keep running off of fuel. And then when it goes out, you don't have anything else to put back in. You know, you're just basically running on fumes. Mm -hmm. So I tell people you have to kind of keep gassed up Mm -hmm. because it's not a good feeling running on fumes because eventually it's you're going to go empty. Mm -hmm. So I've learned to just kind of keep my cup filled and to inspire and use them as my inspiration. Oh, I love that. I feel like there was so many juicy little tidbits in there. But you're absolutely right. Like we get to show our children what's possible by modeling, by leading, by example, by showing them. And I do. I feel like when you have children, your purpose expands, right? It gets Mm -hmm. bigger. It's like it's. Yeah. Yeah. I have this message I want to share in the world. And I have these four beautiful human beings that get to now make the world a better place through their four individual messages that they want to share by following their passion, by following their Mm -hmm. bliss and what lights them up. And when we give ourselves permission to do that work, it does ignite a little spark in them of what's possible. And it's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. So I think that's such a great place for us to end and wrap up here today. 
I do want to yeah. ask you because so many working moms can resonate with mm-hmm. what we talked about earlier on in this conversation around, I do care about health. I do want to nourish my brain and body and my family's brain and bodies with nutrition, Mm -hmm. but honey, I'm tired. Okay. I don't have the energy to get all the things figured out. And so will you share like a recipe of a smoothie specifically around energy, honey? Cause everybody's struggling with (laughs) energy that I talk to right now, including myself. Oh yeah. And so would you share with me a recipe that then I can post in my private Facebook group for moms or on Instagram or something, one of your KKBs yeah. that will help us with energy so we can start using some of that functional nutrition in a smoothie yeah. because we don't have time, honey, to cook all these things. And we can start you getting don't. some energy back. And from there, need. I want to share with the people where they can find you and more of your work. Okay. Yeah. Well, like I said, one of my go-to smoothies always is, to me, a green smoothie. Okay. And that energized me because you're getting your leafy greens in. This particular one is the Neva's Greens. And I like it because it has kale in it. It has a lot of leafy kale, organic kale, spinach. That's good for energy. It's good for your skin. It has coconut water in it, which helps keep you hydrated. You're getting back your electrolytes with the coconut water. You're getting energized with it, especially when it's this hot. You want your energy in your something that keeps you refreshed. It has hemp seeds in it, which is good for protein. So you're getting your protein in. It has a wheatgrass juice powder in it. That's good. It's a superfood powder. It has the antioxidants in it. And I always put collagen in my smoothies as well. Yes. Because I just feel even most people don't get enough collagen in. And when you get older, you lose collagen, your bones. And so that's good. And it also helps repair your muscles and your tissues. So I would say that was that's one of the ones I recommend because you're getting your good leafy greens in. And most people don't get enough greens in their diet. Yes. And that's one of the ones that really helped me. It helped with my skin. It helped me with energy. It helped me with focus. So I would recommend drinking one of those a day. That's one of my best sellers. Okay. And that was one of the ones, like I said, that really changed my life because it helped me with, like I said, with my skin. It helped me with energy. And I got in all of the antioxidants in. So it's like things that my body was lacking. I know I was able to get it within that smoothie. Beautiful. So, and especially as women, we have to take care of our bodies because we have to take care of our children. And mm-hmm. even if you don't have children, you just, as a woman, so much is expected for women just in general. Mm-hmm. And we carry so much weight and so much load And we handle so many things. We tackle so many projects. We just make things happen. I believe that's just how God made us. Mm -hmm. We're multitaskers. We're CEOs. You know, we're therapists. We're doctors. We're everything. You know, a woman, we just do it all. We just wear multiple hats. So I recommend just drinking a smoothie because it helps keep you energized. You want to keep your body fueled. You want to work out. You want to be active. So that way you're able to function properly. You're able to live a healthier lifestyle. You're able to do the things that you want for yourself, first of all, for your children, maybe your grandchildren, Mm -hmm. and have the energy to do it. People ask me all the time, how do you even have the energy to do everything you're doing? Like you, and that's what I tell them. I try to have a healthy lifestyle. I drink smoothies and I try to stay active. And those are my three secrets. And I tell anyone that's where it has to start. But make sure that you're putting yourself first, that you're keeping yourself healthy first, physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, and give yourself permission to have a bad day, to have a meltdown if you want. Just don't stay there Mm -hmm. and know that it's okay, that there are other women, there are other people that will support you and know that you're not doing this by yourself. Know that there's always someone going through something either similar to what you're going through or someone that may be going through something even worse. But I think it's so important to have relationship with other mothers, other women to know that I'm not the only one feeling this way. I'm not the only one going through this. But what we can do, we can help one another. We can empower one another. 
and we can make a difference in this world. Mm. So that yes. would be my country. I love yeah. that. Okay, so I will mm-hmm. post that recipe in Mommy's Mental Health Matters, which is my Facebook group. I'll add you to it, Sandra, so you can yeah. become a resource to mamas if they do have nutrition questions or just mentorship questions. We'll invite you to that group so you can be yeah, I love you can that. be in there. But where can the good people find you online? Where can they find a K and B smoothie? Like, let us know where we can connect with they, you. Okay, they can find me online at K on Instagram. I'm at KBS Smooth Nutrit. So that's KBS all together Smooth Nutrit without the I O N at the end. I'm under. Twitter, KBS Smooth Nutrition, TikTok, KBS Smooth Nutrition, pretty much all the social handles are under KBS Smooth Nutrition. My website is www.kbssmoothnutrition.com. My email is sandra at kbssmoothnutrition.com. You can order my smoothies online. You can look on my website. I do deliver, so you can place um, delivery orders. You can take place pre-orders. I have about seven grab and go locations i'm working on um hopefully having a brick and mortar but right now i do have them available in several local studios here and you're in memphis tennessee right i'm in memphis tennessee everybody knows memphis tennessee and are you ever gonna branch out of tennessee or are you gonna do the brick and mortar and just kick ass in tennessee (laughs) i plan to do that in tennessee but i do plan to branch out as well Yeah. Okay. Well, you yeah. keep us posted when that's going to happen, so we can I support you in the other state that we're yeah. in. Yeah. Yeah. But they can find my smoothies in all three cycle bar locations. That's Germantown, Midtown, Lakeland, Rumble Boxing, Mind Body House Yoga Studio, as well as Core Collective Broad and Brown Skin Yoga. Yes. And it would soon be coming somewhere, another wellness center. That I'm not going to mention right now, but it will be also coming to a wellness center soon as well. So for right now, they can go to any of those locations and get a grab and go smoothie. Beautiful. I love that. Well, Sandra, I so appreciate you taking your time to be here with us today and sharing your story. And thank you for being a light in the world. And thank you for modeling the way of what's possible for women, for mothers, for entrepreneurs and yeah, let's definitely stay in touch and keep the conversation going. And for those of you who are listening, there was so many little uh, gems in this. You may want to re-listen and take notes, but we will be back same time, same place next week. Bye for now, guys. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Thank you so much for listening to the Unperfected Pod. I hope this episode helped you feel a little less alone and a little more inspired to be you. If you like what we're doing here, I would so appreciate that you subscribe, rate, and review this podcast. If you do, share the episode on Instagram and tag me, at Unperfected to enter to win a one-to-one laser coaching session. Also, feel free to join me in my private Facebook community, Mommy's Mental Health Matters, where we continue the conversation. Thanks again for being here and see you in next week's episode.